A few years ago, I built this gaming dining table and I quickly realized that I would probably have to build a set of chairs to go with it. So it took me a while to get to it, but I finally came up with a design that I liked and I built the prototype in the guild and with the help of some guild members, I actually developed the prototype into a final design that I really like and I've got all six chairs right here around the table. So let me show you some of the details. The wood I used is cherry and the overall design kind of has a modern aesthetic, but has a few throwbacks to some classic things like green and green furniture, which you guys know I love. Uh, I've got a few cloud lifts here as details in the rail and the crest rail at the top. I've got some nice curvature in the back rail. In fact, I actually used uh, the profile of the Maloof Rockers backrest to give me the shape that I know is definitely gonna be comfortable. Crest rail has some curvature there and the legs are angled out at about six or seven degrees and that gives the chair a little bit of a splay angle, makes the top a little bit wider. The seat here is upholstered and inset and you could design any seat you want for that, overlay, inset, it all works with this design. Uh, the legs have some nice tapers and a pillowed effect on them, and the finish is just a simple wiping varnish. Now for the full version of this build, I think it's like 16 or 17 videos that we did and a full set of plans and templates, go to the woodwhispererguild.com for more information. But for now, let me show you how I built it. So as it turns out, chairs have been around for a long time. So before I put pencil to paper, I'll use some other chairs as reference and extract some important measurements. From there, I'll sketch up some full-size drawings. This not only helps me work out the details, but also gives me what I need to make the templates. The templates are made from eighth inch hardboard, which is inexpensive, flexible, and easy to shape. Before cutting the legs to shape, I'll route the mortises. The rear legs are then rough cut and a side template is used at the router table with a flush trim bit to develop the final shape. After the prototype was built, I made a nice rounding sled to help me build the five remaining chairs. With the side profile established, we can now cut the front profile on the rear legs. The front legs are cut to size and then mortised. Each leg receives tapers on the inside faces and a pillowed profile on the outside faces. The rails of the chair are cut to size and mitered to the appropriate angle on the ends. Normally this would be a nightmare to mortise, but with a simple angled support board, the process is pretty easy. This is a variation of a trick that I learned from fellow woodworker Matthew Teague. The rails receive a decorative cloud lift inspired by Daryl Peart's Green and Green Aurora Furniture. Cutoff stock is used to create the loose tenons, and we can now do a quick dry assembly. The crest rail is cut to fit in between the legs and the ends are mitered for a perfect fit. I'll attach the crest rail with screws and then we'll later cap those off with walnut plugs. The backrest blanks are first cut to size and mitered to fit between the bottom back rail and the crest rail. The crest rail, lower back rail, and backrest blanks are now mortised. The backrests are then cut to shape in two dimensions. I can now add a slight pillowing with a high point in the center, and the edges are about a sixteenth of an inch thinner. We can now shape the crest rail with a curve at the top and two little relief cuts on the bottom. The crest rail also has curves cut out on the front and the back faces.
Since I'm doing an inset seat, I also need to add cleats to the inside of the rails. After rounding over the edges and doing some finish sanding, I could do the final assembly of the chair. Walnut plugs are installed and then trimmed flush. The crest rail is smoothed into the legs, and any last bits of sanding are taken care of. This chair design can accommodate three seat types including wood overlay, upholstered overlay, and upholstered inset, which is the version I'm going for. Upholstery is one of those things that's easy to learn but difficult to master. All you need is a stable base, some foam, a layer of batting, and your fabric of choice. The fabric is wrapped and stapled to the underside. The finish I'm using is a wiping varnish. I apply a total of four coats. The cherry will age over time and an oil-based finish really brings out the natural beauty. So if you want to build one of these chairs or even a whole set, you can get all the details at... Woodwhisper.com Pretty close. Thewoodwhisperguild.com all right, nice job. <laughs> just go to. Just go to. Um, Try again. What is it? So if you'd like to. Sorry, I mess up. <laughs>